What's up everybody, it's Bear with a Gun here from Sleepless Night Studios, and welcome to a kind of preview, I suppose is probably the best way to put it. Um, kind of a test run, if you will, for PC Building Simulator. It's a new game that came out at the end of March, and much like the simulator games that have come before it, like, you know, all the truck driver simulator and all that kind of stuff there's it's it's a pc building simulation game it's where you run a shop and you can you know you get orders and you have to fix different pcs find out what's wrong with them replace them upgrade them all that good stuff now there is a free build mode which is what we're currently in uh that lets you basically have the run of the mill of what is available now as it stands i really have had a surprisingly fun amount of time with this game. Now, it might be because I'm coming off of the fresh of having just built my own PC, so it's kind of like a new frontier for me, um, but it's surprisingly addicting for me. And I, again, I have kind of a, a, a lot invested in computers, so computers are a big deal to me, but um, I find it very, very subtly addicting. Like, you don't think about it. And then, like, you know, you realize that you've been sitting here for, like, two hours and, you know, whatever. Um, the shop side of the game actually works really well, and I might do a little bit of that towards the end. But really, what I was doing was this was a two birds, one stone video. Um, I had a f uh, quite a few comments and stuff asking me about my new rig that I had put together. And while it doesn't actually... You are limited to what parts are available, which having just come out and the, the developers are still... Um, working with licenses and things like that to get more and more parts and also updating the game to improve like add uh, I think the current thing they said they were working on that they're hoping will be done soon is um, yeah soon team TM um, is the uh, crossfire SLI stuff so where you can have multiple graphics cards right now there's motherboards in here that have multiple graphics cards but you can't actually install more than one GPU um, stuff like that. So there's some things that I'm going to kind of fill in the blanks of as far as what my actual rig really is and kind of explain where it would be a little bit different. Um, but having said that, it's also a good way for me to kind of show off the game and how it works. So that was kind of the idea was rather than starting with an actual let's play idea, it was going to get our feet wet and let you guys see kind of how the game flows and see if you'd be interested in a series on it. Cause I'm thinking about starting a series on it, but if nobody is really interested in it, um, then it'll just be kind of my keep it to myself kind of thing. That, another one of the games that I just have a lot of fun with. So without further ado, uh, this is not the case that I have, but it's the, probably what I would dub the closest in terms of internal components and things to what I have. What I uh, This is a MSI Master Cooler something. It's the... here. So in free build, let me explain this a little bit. So you can, you can work with different things. Um, I have... this is the behemoth as far as what is available currently part-wise. It's the best PC I've been able to build so far. It's ridiculous. Um, let me just... We'll, we'll get to mine in a minute. Let's, let's show the cool one. So it's got um, eight, eight RAM bays. I, this, that's like unheard of to me. I haven't... I've, 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 why? Anyways, so 128 gigs of RAM. It's got like a Threadripper uh, Ryzen 16 core uh, CPU. Tons of fans. Um, we got these fans over here. It's even got a cable man. This is pretty cool. So if you were to say, go to your cable and you go to plug in, say one of the USBs, it'll show you where you can plug it in. You've got two USB ports here, but when you plug it in, check this out, it goes through this thing. So like when you close it all up, oh, let's get out of cabling. So when you close it all up, you've got all your cables go through this. That's like so freaking crazy. Um, so yeah, as you can see down at the bottom, I should probably explain the controls a bit. So you, we've got left click to work on it, right click to pick it up and you can move it. This comes in handy in the main game because when you get uh, in the main game, you'll get boxes here that are um, shipped to you from the client. You'll pick them up, you'll put them on a workstation, do them, pick them back up and then put them back down to ship them back out. So picking them up and stuff is useful. Um, if you turn them on, now this is your station, like your personal computer space kind of thing. 
Um, so in the main game, that's why you can put it down here and it boots up. Normally when you're over here, you have to plug in all three. It's a uh, mouse, keyboard, power, and monitor cables have to be plugged in for it to turn on. In this slot over here, it's like your work computer, air quotes. So for the business side, now right now because we're in free build and I haven't set this up with an OS and stuff, it's saying it doesn't have one. But you would turn it on and you get your screen, you can click on this, um, actually even without an OS, you can click on it and it goes to this screen and it'll tell you errors, blah 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 blah. You can hit exit, you can hit escape, etc and so on. Uh, when you're over here working on something, you have these four things. You have P for power, which I don't have the power cable plugged in, so it's not doing anything. Three sets your cables, so all the highlighted things are cables, and when you click on one or select one, it'll show you available ports for that thing. So for power, I only have one. For USB, I would have a couple different options over here. And for video, you have the one back here on your graphics card. So that's how the cabling stuff works, and when you're dealing with the power unit and stuff, it all kind of gives you the different available things, and you got to work with stuff and things like that. It's it's fairly simple, so once you've done it a few times, it gets pretty easy per fairly quickly. The second tab is remove, so it lets you take things apart. If you highlight this and something is red, it means you have to remove that first. It's, it's um, uh, dependent on something else like this you have to remove the front plate before your side plate before you can remove the control panel so on and so forth uh, the one key takes you to the install tab where you can search through stuff you can toggle only show things that fit this computer you have your tools thermal paste the usb drive basically is an all-in-one like it, it's it, you plug that in for the os and stuff to get it to do things right off the bat um, graphics cards gpus cpus graphics cards are GPUs, don't mind me, motherboards, memory storage, etc. and so on. Now, like I said, in free mode, you have all the different available stuff. In uh, the actual game, you would only have the parts in your inventory that you've purchased through the in-game, uh, basically equivalent of like uh, Amazon or eBay or something to the equivalent like that, where you'd order parts it comes out of your business account. So it's it's kind of like a business management as well as, uh, or business simulator as well as a uh, uh, computer. But, so, let's get started. You can see I already did one as a test. Let me see if I can find the other case. Here we go. So, this took me a while to figure out in the uh, free build when you put a tower in this cabinet, which is a storage cabinet. Um, You'll have the version that you put in with all the parts, but then you will also, it'll also somewhere give you another one that's clean. Um, so you can basically start another build. That took me a while to figure it out. So that's how you would select stuff in free mode. Now in the main game, you start with your main desk and your primary workstation, but then these two are bought. You have to level up by doing jobs and you have to pay to have it upgraded as well as this storage facility. Though, as it stands right now, in the actual business mode, I don't really know why you would want to do the storage thing, because, yeah, you don't really have that. Like, if you have something, it's a client's computer, and when you're done with the job, you just send it back. So I don't really know if the storage thing is really worth having in the main game. At least not for me so far from what I've played. i played a, quite a bit. I think I got up to, like, level 6 or something, just because I was, like I said, uh, it's deceptively addicting. So, um, I have my actual case. This is a uh, MSI Coolmaster or whatever, uh, but the layout's fairly similar. Um, and if any of you have played World of Guns, it's very similar to that, which is why I was very comfortable with this, because you click on a part and then you can press and hold to unscrew stuff all the way, and then it takes that panel off and it goes into your inventory. Then you can go to PC parts. Um, this is stuff that I think I pulled out of a different version of this case, so it still shows it in here, because it's the same kind of case. Like, you'll see the same side panel. This was that one, um, I just put away, or, no, did I put one away? I did put one away. So if you have the same kind of case, um, in free build and stuff, it'll show you the same parts that you didn't put away on the other one type of thing. Hope that makes sense. It can be a little confusing, but... Um, this is where you find all of the case components and things you've removed, basically. So, my actual case is a Fantex Entho Pro-M, which is fairly similar. Um, 
it has two bays under here. It does have a, a PSU shroud, though, down here all along this bottom part. Um, and it does have two primary bays, and then I bought uh, modular upgrades so that it could hold uh, four more hard drives. So this is fairly similar because it has one, two, three, four, five bays. So mine will just have a fourth up here and then it would be the same thing essentially and this isn't uh mine is not a case rack it's individual trays kind of thing and i also don't have these uh solid state frames here um the other thing mine does not have really a front panel it kind of does but it, it's actually it looks closer to this and it doesn't have the buttons up here it has a couple of buttons on the side uh but for the most part it's a fairly minimal uh, inter uh, minimal interface kind of thing. It does have a fan f uh, all these dust filters. Mine, mine does have the dust filter in the front there, but it only has one case. So we're going to remove or not case. Yeah, the case only has one case. <clears throat> fan. It has one fan. Um, and you can see the dependency thing here where we had to remove those in order to get access to the screws for these. Now, the one thing that I'm a little disappointed with so far, but it would be easily fixed with a patch, and because this is so early access, like having just released into early access, I'm sure it'll get fixed at some point. In the, I almost said survival, in the main career mode of the game, you can, when you hit certain level milestones and you have enough money, you can buy upgrades like uh, when you click on this and you tap a screw, you don't have to press and hold, you just tap it and it goes ving, and it unscrews it automatically. Um, same with cabling, there's a, an upgrade that you can get fairly early on to where like if you attach one cable or uh, click certain buttons, things like that, all of these cables will just snap in type of thing. So I'm kind of disappointed that that's not in free build because free build's all about just freedom. So I would think those little tedious tasks, you know, would be better sped up kind of thing. But so this is a bit more reminiscent of mine. It does have um, a, a single optical bay up here for a um, Blu-ray DVD, whatever. And I took the DVD player out of my old, or, or burner, out of my old tower and put it in there just so I had a way to... Um, read discs, install windows from a disc, etc. and so on. The irony is my motherboard can only do six SATA connections, which the optical disc takes up one, so it's in my tower, but because I have six hard drives, I, it's not plugged into anything. It doesn't do anything. So here's an example of what I was talking about. So we took that extra fan out so it's more in tune with, um, with what mine looks like. So now we can go back and grab the dust filter. And put that there and we'll take the top two dust filters with this particular case i'm not really sure why they have like optical bay dust filters when there's no optical bay rack i guess there's a way you could probably get one uh and then we can put the front on actually i'm gonna leave it off because that is more reminiscent of how mine looks it does have a front plate but it does and eh, whatever it's not my case so we'll put that there uh we'll put the hard drive rack back and we'll put the other one back screw those in okay so this is pretty pretty close this is pretty close to how mine would be set up uh again all of these uh drive bays for solid states i do not have um now this one does have a fan controller on the back. I don't know. I think they they just patched the game today, and I think they said they added uh, fan controls for one of the cases that it had it, but it didn't work. So this might be the case. If it is the case that does this, uh, I'm not going to use it just because, like I said, mine mine doesn't use it, so I'm not going to utilize it. Now we get to the core. So let's tab over to motherboards. As you can see, there's quite a few to pick from actually. Uh, for being a launch early access type thing, there's there's quite a bit. However, they do not actually have my particular board. Mine, uh, as you can see, it's only the Z's or the Z370. Or no, they do have an, an AX. Is it an AX? Yes, they do have the AX, which is closest to mine. I don't know what the difference between the K7 and the 5 is, so I'm going to 
go... Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I'm gonna go with the K7. I think. Um, so, for any of you that have ever built PCs before, they've got the mounting... Uh, what do they call this? I forget the name, but they're basically the mounting brackets for the motherboard. Um, and different motherboards require different uh, mounting pins, so they make you do the mounting pins per board, which is a little annoying, but it does make sense since they're not all the same. So the board goes in, screw the board down. Um, and this is actually a really interesting... I, I was really kind of excited about this because even though it's not exactly the same parts, I would love if the devs, like if I could just like email them and be like, hey, could you maybe finagle a way to get these exact parts in there? Because I would love to actually do my exact build part by part. Uh, not only just to show it off for you guys more virtually, but also because it'd be cool for future upgrades for me to play around with different configurations and things and see what would happen. Um, but this is a cool example of, for, of one thing. So this is pretty much the same kind of board that I have, except for a couple of technical things, which I'll go over. Uh, one is mine does not have these little digital number readouts for whatever reason, but this is a Gigabyte GAX AX370, sorry. Mine is a um, MSI X370 Gaming Pro Carbon. And there's a few little eh, little, little intricate intricate detail things that um, are different. For one, I believe this board, I can't really quite tell, it's kind of dark, but I believe this board has like uh, four SATA plugs or something, and mine has six, so that's one little thing. Um, but for doing the CPU and stuff, these are the typical mounting brackets for a clip fan. Uh, I had to take these off on mine because the... Uh, CPU that I got had a screw-in um, mounting system, which didn't utilize these, so you had to unscrew these, which was kind of a pain in the butt, honestly, trying to do... Uh, you can ask Zazalus Arden, who was walking me through pretty much every virtual step of the whole process and was having to listen to all my freakouts when things didn't work right. Um, seriously, still giving him shoutouts because he helped me out so tremendously. So if you're happy that I'm back up and doing view videos, leave some love in the comment for Zazalus because he's amazing. He's an awesome human being. Um, but on the... On the MSI board that I have, and I can't speak for the gigabytes and stuff, I'm, I'm assuming it's for digital reasons, like because this is virtual, it's not going to be exact. Um, but, anyways, uh, there's a back plate that holds those mounts on, and when you unscrew them, the back, back plate floats, which was a big pain in the butt when you tried to put the fan on and screw it in there. Uh, because it would cause the fan to wobble because it wasn't really getting a good grip because the holes that it's supposed to screw into was moving. So that was a real pain to get the thermal paste on even and blah, 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 blah. Anyways, tech talk. So uh, for CPU, they do actually have mine. It's a Ryzen 7. Oops. Stop it. 7. Uh, Ryzen 7 8 core 1700. That is my exact CPU. So we put that on there, we put that on there. Now, if you were to purchase this, um, at least for the moment, as it stands, the Ryzen 1700 comes with a AMD, uh, I think it's AMD, um, a Wraith Spire cooler. The closest equivalent I could find, I would actually like them also in future updates to separate case cooling from CPU cooling. I think that would be... I know cooling is cooling and so you can throw them in the same category, but I think it'd be easier. So these are all case fan upgrades you could do. I'm not doing them because I didn't, so I'm showing you guys what I built, but for game purposes they are there. As far as I know, this is the only one that has LED, which is fun to play around with. Uh, so when we get into CPU, this one looks closest. Um, now there's some licensing things that they don't have everything to, so some things are, I'm assuming, don't know for sure, so don't quote me on it, but I'm assuming they're made up names just for the game for stuff that are off-brand stock, you know, we, we don't have permission to use that actual company's label type thing. I believe Mortoni is one of them, so I'm kind of thinking this is like the game's way of kind of looking at a Wraith Cooler type thing, because it looks really, really similar. 
except for, as you can see, the screw brackets don't go into that bracket. In truth, I don't know where they're going. They're just sticking through kind of thing. So that's kind of the game aspect of it. Um, but the one that I, the actual Wraith Spire Cooler looks pretty similar. You can Google it. Um, and, but it would go into those brackets right there. And then if you, well, we'll do cabling in a minute. So that's that. Now, I don't think it's the exact, exact, exact RAM. Let's go to memory. Uh, but they do have team group in here and they do have T-Force, which is what mine is. However, if I remember correctly, I don't remember seeing mine in here. Mine are, um... T-Force Vulcans. Uh, some of these are like Nighthawk, and I don't really know if there's any difference to them, but just for uh, clarity of detail, we're going to use these, the dark version. Uh, they, mine are red, so I'm going to use the red. Um, and I got two 8 gigabyte at 3000 megahertz DDR4. So that's spec-wise as close in the game at the moment as I can get for what mine actually are. Officially though, for any of you that actually care, um, they're the Vulcan, the T-Force Vulcans. Again, I don't know enough about actual nitty-gritty stuff. I know what they all do, but like what the difference between the Dark and the Vulcan, I have no idea. All right, so next up, um, GPU. Let's do GPU. Now again, they have a similar one, but not the exact. Um, Let's see, do they have a 960 in here? They do, they have a, and let's use, probably the MSI one is the closest, I think. So they're using, I'm, I'm gonna use this MSI GeForce GTX 960 gaming four gig. It's close. It's not the exact model. I have an EVGA GeForce GTX 960 Super Clock, I think. Um, so it's not exactly the same. And again, when we highlight the PCI slot, um, it shows you what covers need to be removed. So you can grab these, take them off. And because I've done this before, you'll notice that's why I had extra PCI covers in my, um, yeah, in my stuff. So. Screw this in. So there's our GPU. Again, uh, equivalent, but not exact. Uh, now, for hard drives, I don't think I can do exactly what mine is because they seem to only have Seagate uh, storage and even that is limited. So they have uh, Seagate Barracudas and then the Xi'an Mega, which again, I think is kind of the off and the Mortoni is kind of like the off... Uh, unofficial brand names for things, uh, but they don't have some of the larger uh, stuff. Like the hard drives go to 500 gigabyte. It looks like in the Mortoni, the She Mega goes up to a 250 for a solid state. So pretty much, I end up doing a lot of the Barracuda stuff. So. For an operating system drive, I'm just going to stick these in one at a time, but then I'll go over what mine actually are. So we're going to put this one in here. It's two terabyte. Mine is a Seagate two terabyte, but it is one of the new Fire Cuda, which is the solid state hard drive, the hybrid. That I didn't even know was a thing. I did not know anything about that until Zazalus Arden told me about it. That was the... Uh, I was like, I'm going to do a solid state, I think, for the OS. Is that right? And he was like, do this one. It's a hybrid. And I was like, "There's a, they, it comes in hybrids? You know. Um... And let me double check real quick here. So if we grab the data plug, it looks like we've got one, two, three, four. So we're not going to plug all of these in. Um, I'm just going to throw them in here because why not? So that would be one drive. Uh, and then my next drive up from that, and these are actually, I'm kind of stacking them in the proper order. I have a four terabyte Western Digital Red. And I use that for my primary just storage documents, movies, pictures, files, random crap, whatever. That's just my my storage drive. Uh, hello? Can I open? I guess I have to have one of these. So up from that, again, I'm going to use a four. I can't use anything else, but I have an eight terabyte Western Digital Red. 
and that is for backups. Um, I have never done backups before and I've lost a lot of drives in the last couple of years and I'm sick of losing data so I have an 8 terabyte to back up a bunch of different other things. Um, and if any of you are like, well, I, the math doesn't add up once I get all the drives in, yes, it does not. Um, there's a couple of the drives that I won't be backing up, I'm just not worried about it. But um, So the 8 terabyte red would be for backups. Then we go to a 2 terabyte Western Digital Black, and that's my gaming and programming, or program, gaming stuff, store, programs and software and all that. And I didn't know about the differences in performance really, I knew the reds were supposed to be more durable, so I wanted those for things that would last longer, like backup drives, footage for recording, etc. and so on, but I didn't realize that the black uh, 7200 RPM speed would make it actually run faster for load times and such. So that was another Zazzalus recommendation that I used that for my gaming. So I did that and it's been working very well. Uh, then we have, and again, I know if any of you are confused, it's just because that's just the brands that I have to work with. So these are all Seagates in the game, but this is not how I would have actually set it up. So. The one up from that is a 2TB Western Digital Red for footage. Um, again, I didn't need the fast RPMs and stuff, but I needed durable because there's a lot of read-write data going on for recording game footage. Um, now above this, this only can do 5. Above this I, I had, um, I took a Western Digital 2TB Blue out of my old tower that died because that drive was fine so I just threw it in there as since it could hold more as an extra miscellaneous anything else just random crap that for once the four terabyte gets fold up start using that that kind of thing. Um, so that's pretty much all the major players I do have for now the power unit let's 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 deal with the power unit. Because this is going to be kind of wonky. So in reality, let's go to power unit. In reality, I would have something equivalent to, let me see if I can find one, probably equivalent to about, uh, really? We don't have any here? Where's that course here? Probably something like this. Um, because it is a, a modular, it's a fully modular, but it's about a 550. My actual power unit is an EVGA, I wrote it down, where did it go? Uh, EVGA Supernova 550G3, which is fully modular, but it's a 550 watt. Now, here's the thing. In the game, at the moment, they, uh, I'm sure it's going to change at some point, when you pick your... Um, hard drives and you select the power. I don't have a power unit so it's not giving me the option yet, but when you select the power, every hard drive requires a slot. That's not how mine is set up. I have one three pin uh, cable in the power unit and then it has three SATA plugs off of it. So that's eh, that, that won't really work in the game. So I only have two on my actual power unit. But in the game, to do five hard drives, you need five plugs. So it, it's it's just the way that the game's set up in the moment. So what I ended up doing was I think the 13... I'm just gonna throw the 13 in here. I think it was... I, that might be too much, but I think it was the 13 that finally had enough plugs to do it. But in real life, it's an EVGA 550 Supernova, and it had plenty of plugs. I did, I did only have six, but it worked out because my motherboard could only do six anyway. Um, and also, that's one other difference with the G, with the EVGA version of the 960 that I have. It only has one. I think it's a four pin. It's either a four or a three. Uh, well, I, I guess it's actually an eight or a six, but you guys know what I mean. Um, but it only has one plug. This one has two. My actual GPU only has one, so that makes it a little more easy to plug in. So again, we've got all this set up. Now let me go grab the power unit shroud. Here we go. And we'll throw this back on. And you can see that uh, you get these little status messages, which is, I'm just now noticing some of you are probably driven nuts by that. Put the throw base on! You know, um... Now I will say, this game simplifies thermal pace quite a bit, at least in my opinion. 
though. <sighs> the thermal paste thing did not go very well for me. Um, because, basically, uh, again, Zazzlis knows the story all too well. But essentially, the Wraith Cooler comes with a pre-applied paste. Which was good, because then I didn't have to mess with it. Um, which was one less thing I didn't have to do for the first time. But, I put it down, and because of the backplate thing, it wiggled a bit. So I was like, mm, maybe I need to take it back off and put it back on. Or, you know, clean it off and everything. So I did that. And once I did that, um, I booted it up, and the system was... If I let it sit for a while, I was checking BIOS, things like that. It, it got up to, I think... 47, 52 degrees Celsius, somewhere in there, the CPU temp, which, um, you know, Zazzalus was like, that's way too hot for it to be idling, and I was like, great, so I screwed something up. I removed my fan, cleaned the CPU, cleaned the, th the fan, put more thermal paste on, put it back on, I must have done that five times, at least, and three of which I was pretty confident went on pretty well. But it still was clocking in in the high 40s, low 50s when I let it sit for a few minutes. So I was I was getting very uh, discouraged. I was going to say distraught or depressed, but it wasn't that far. It was just discouraged. I was like, you know, I'm doing this myself, but whatever I'm doing is not working. Turns out I needed to install Windows. Because apparently Ryzen CPUs tend to run hotter in BIOS because apparently Windows has some kind of power management stuff that throttles it back. And when you boot it up, without Windows, I guess it's running full tilt in, in a BIOS, uh, is kind of what I'm gathering, but, so anyways, that was kind of a fun thermal paste story, so when I hear thermal paste, and it's like, like that, I'll even do it again, because why not, you don't even have to clean it. I, I do kind of hope they eventually do that kind of stuff, where you have to, like, clean stuff, they already have dust, to where you can dust it off and things, but anyways, boop, and there you go, it's done, that's all there is to it. <laughs> so, you know, that's kind of funny to me. But yeah, I do think it'd be cool if they actually had... I think there was talk of doing actual cable management, because right now the cables just kind of do their own thing uh, when you select them, speaking of. And I should point out, I do believe there is a bug where, for all of you eagle-eyed people, this should be the data port and this should be the power. And on these bottom ones... Oh, looks like they changed it. Maybe they, maybe it got patched. Nope, there we go. So on the top ones, it was the top ones. So when you click on the data, it actually goes to the power, which is not accurate. Um, so don't do that in real life. <laughs> it should be connecting to these. And you can see that when we get this all connected up, uh, by when we grab this one, now it goes to the SATA plugs. And this one is going to go to the power. So that's a... Uh, weird glitch that I'm not sure what that's about, but just know that's not actually accurate. Um, but as you can see, cables kind of do their own thing. And in case anyone was wondering, I wasn't really explaining this very well, the uh, right mouse you click and hold and you can rotate around, move things around. The WASD keys let you move around the computer, and then the scroll wheel will let you kind of zoom in and out to get a, a better look at things. Um, ah, okay, so this is the case. So we'll connect the case up, um, connect the CPU fan, and then you have the tower fans. It doesn't look like this was the case they were talking about that had the fan management. But this is a fan manager, so I'm not really sure why it's not... Or I think it is. I could be wrong, but it looks like a fan manager. Or a, a fan control or whatever. But usually, once you highlight a port, it'll tell you what's available. So like this one has a port here, so now that plugs in there. And as you can see, like I said, this cable all of a, su all of a sudden routed itself through the little cable management stuff. So there's been talk, I believe, that they might add uh, at some point the ability to actually, or the necessity rather, to actually manage all the cables yourself, which would be kind of interesting. So we got all that connected. Let's do the GPU. I'm just throwing this in random ports. If I was actually doing it like legitimately, then you know you might want to take more precautions or time with it. But at the moment, the way the game is set up, it doesn't really matter what ports go into what or anything. So you can kind of just do it however you want. And like I said, uh, we have four, but I'm missing the fifth or the sixth drive up here, and I can't plug in. Uh, 
the fifth one on this tower, but in my personal one, there'd be another drive and all of these would be plugged in. Now with that, it should be good to go. Wow, I need to speed this up. I just realized that I'm running kind of long for a short first preview episode and all this talking and explanation is going, taking up a lot of time. All right, so let's set that all up. Uh, what cables are we missing? Oh, these cables. Okay. So when we hit cables, we'll have a mouse and keyboard, or one of them, vice versa, whatever. We have a graphics one, and then we have a power one. And then we should not have missing cables. What are we missing cables for? I don't know that I'm missing any cables. Oh, it's probably the, the, the other drive. Yep, that's what it is. So let's just double check that to make sure. Uh, we'll remove that cable. You can, When you're on the remove tab, you can also highlight cables and snip them so that you can get rid of stuff. And again, it highlights uh, dependencies. So we'll remove that drive. Now it says incomplete case. Okay. So now when we snap this on, now it says no S installed. So it kind of gives you what problems the thing's facing. For OS though, if we booted it right now, you'd see the same error we had before. So you go into tools, select the USB drive, and plug it in. Now when you boot it up, you get this, which is the Omega. Again, it's the it's the games. It's like not Windows and stuff like that. It's the games thing. Uh, and we should, once that's installed, ready to boot. So there's no more errors or anything like that. Now, if you were doing the main game and you were running different things, you have one USB drive. In free mode, you can do you know one per computer. So if you were wanting to do over here, you'd click back in here, select remove, pull the USB, and you're good to go. I think, I don't think it'll affect, oh, it does, okay. So when you're in here, you do need the USB drive to add and remove programs. And there's a pretty basic suite of things. System info, there's 3D Mark, uh, which tests how well the thing's doing in, when under strain. And you'll need that in a lot of the actual career uh, jobs because they'll say they want it run to benchmark it, that kind of thing, before you give it back, blah, blah, blah. There's virus scans when people call in and they're like, you know, my system's got viruses or whatever, you load this in. Um, but just for example, we'll load in system info and probably the lighting. And it'll tell you, after you install any program, it'll ask you if you want to restart. Um, then there's a will it run. All of these are relevant pretty much to the jobs. Uh, PC Bay will let you get cheaper uh, used products and things rather than buying everything at, at uh, MSRP or whatever, store value. Uh, you'll get some jobs that'll say, I want it to be able to run this program, so you'll need this one. You'll need some that'll need an upgrade. Now, I recently figured this one out. When it says, when you have a job that says upgrade, you can check the part ranking to see what ranks above it. Because there's some that you would think would be an improvement, but the game does not see it that way. Kind of thing. Um, I just realized something. It's highlighting all of these. I wonder if I can... I think it's only doing one at a time. I wonder why it's highlighting them all. That's interesting. Anyways, I do apologize for this running a lot longer. I really didn't expect it to take that long. Um, yeah, that should be good. So you can have it restart or whatever, or you can just shut it back down and then boot it back up. Now, I will say I'm running on, like, medium, which is kind of surprising, because you wouldn't think it would need a heavy-duty machine to run a game about building computers, but I think it's because all of these are like separate 3D models and things. As you can see, they're spinning and doing things, and when you pick them up and move them, you'll get frame rate issues and things like that um, on like the absolute highest. Just for kicks, um, let's tweak it to fantastic for a second. Um, I might get some frame rate issues from this. I don't know. Okay, I paused it because I wasn't sure how long that was going to take. Um, we seem to be doing pretty good with this one at the moment, so maybe the updates have optimized it a little bit more. Uh, but as you can see, all the parts and everything look a whole lot 
better and sharper and you can even read some of the print and stuff on here so uh look and stuff it looks really cool when you have it set up this way um but up until recently it wasn't really running this smooth like when i picked this one up it would um it would get really jaggy but they must have really optimized it a little bit more so you can also do lightings so we can select all the light mine at the moment uh, which one can't be adjusted? I think it's the, um, I think it's the G-Force one. You can't change the color. That's why when you select it, the color goes away. Um, but mine is red at the moment. All of the lights and stuff. Oh, wait, what am I doing? It's not red, that's white. There we go. So now you can come back out and you can see that now the board, the RAM, and all that has turned red, which is cool. Um, though I did recently find out that MSI has a program that I could be able to switch it, which is kind of cool. The only thing red then would be that my RAM chips actually have red uh, shields on them. But I could change it to something else, which would be cool. Uh, but yeah, so you have system info, you can check the temperatures, all that kind of stuff. Um, which you can see they're running at, at 40-ish. So, um... And then you got power draw, so you got all these different things you can read out and, you know, what it's doing and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we've got will it run it, and you can select all this kind of stuff. So all of this stuff is needed for, like, jobs and things. They'll need different requirements, need you to confirm different stuff. But that's pretty much the gist of it. Again, I apologize for taking so long, but in explaining the differences in my own build, um, you know, it took longer than I thought. But I hope that kind of clears everything up for you guys. But I thought I know it's not exact as far as it's not the right case and all that kind of stuff. But I, I thought that might actually be a cool way for me to showcase uh, what or at least explain my rig and give you a general ballpark idea of what it looks like. Uh, while also giving you guys a crash course into PC Building Simulator and see if you guys wanted to see an actual series of the career side of it where we try and keep everybody's computers fixed and upgraded and all that cool stuff. Um, I don't, I, I'll, full disclosure, I don't know how interesting it would be to watch. This would probably give you a good idea, I guess. Um, but it's deceptively addicting to play. It starts off like, ah, this is probably going to be boring or whatever, but then, somehow... Uh, it just ends up like you just I got to do one more. Let me just fix this one person's thing um, Stuff like that and it is really kind of interesting how you have to pay your light bill electricity bill and stuff And so like if you turn off your lights before you go out of the office It saves electricity and like little details like that. I think are cool So especially being this early access I'm really looking forward to see where they go with it because they're already doing updates and as you can see they're already patching a lot and uh, stuff like that. So yeah, with that, I think we're going to wrap things up here for today. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like and let me know if you'd like to see more on PC Building Simulator. Until then, we're turning the lights off and we're out. Peace.